Today I'm going to be going over the three most popular implantation techniques, discussing the differences, the pros and the cons. I'm going to be showing you guys two interviews with world-renowned hair transplant surgeons. And at the close of the video, I'm going to share my thoughts and wrap it all up. And hopefully you guys will be in a better position to make a decision. All right, let's get started. All right, technique number one, pre-made slits. And pre-made slits, surgeons create the slits before the grafts are harvested. Once the grafts are harvested, they're placed in a holding solution and then technicians place the grafts using forceps into the scalp. The pro to this is that the surgeon can mitigate excessive bleeding, which could complicate the procedure. The con is that the grafts are outside of the body, which can cause the grafts to die and dry out. And also, if a technician is not trained properly, they could crush the grafts while they're placing it with forceps. Technique number two, which is probably the most popular technique, or I wouldn't say the most popular, but the most marketed technique, which is DHI. DHI stands for direct hair implantation. So basically, the grafts are extracted, they're loaded into an implanter pen, and then the implanter pen creates the site and injects the graft into the scalp simultaneously at the same time. So there is no creating of the sites. Basically the surgeon, as they're going along, they're creating the sites and implanting the grafts. The pros is that it speeds up the process, speeds up the procedure, and the grafts are not, not outside of the body for a long time. The con is that you know, some horrible clinics use this technique and the, the grafts are actually being implanted by untrained technicians. Basically, the outcome of the procedure really depends on how the grafts are being inserted into the scalp, the density, the angle. If any of these things are angled incorrectly, it can be disastrous. So, you know, just speeding up the process doesn't automatically mean that it's going to be better. Keep that in mind. All right, now the first interview I'm going to play is from Dr. Raymond Conier of Chicago Hair Institute. He's one of the best surgeons in the world, one of the most experienced surgeons in the world, and one of the most detailed surgeons in the world by far. So um, he gets pretty technical. Definitely listen to the whole interview. It's there's some really good tidbits, and you know you get a really good feel of his philosophy and the reasons why he prefers a specific method over another. Dr. Conier, I guess I want to start it off by asking you, what are your views on pre-made slits versus implanting, implanted pens, and um, what do you feel is, is, is better, or, or is there a better? I think it comes down to it's what's best in the hands of the operator. I personally favor stick in place with forceps. I mean, historically, going back years ago, we did pre-made openings, which I believe is more or less the standard of, of the trade. Mm. And over time, I just found that doing one at a time graft placement, making an opening, placing the graft gave me the ability to be a little bit more artistic in the placement. I think when you go in and you pre-make 3,000 openings, you've already just predetermined how are these graphs going to lay out what size openings am I using? Is it a one size fits all? And when you're doing stick in place, you're basically, I have graphs coming at me one at a time. Our team sorts out the graphs by size, and that size includes how many hairs are per graft. But we'll even then sub segment these things where we'll have larger twos and smaller twos. And so when the graphs are coming, to me, I know that I may be getting twos and I'm placing into a 0.7 or a 0.8 millimeter opening. And I know immediately for whatever size graphs coming my way, am I upsizing or downsizing? So in my hands, I get a more meticulous fit for each graph that's being placed. That it on top of that, we're again artistically placing an opening putting a graft and so building that hairline or building that coverage throughout the zone so you know i personally believe like a, a great painting mm. doing individual strokes is a whole lot better than you know throwing a lot of strokes on a canvas at one time yeah so you know then you get into the, the, the whole debate of forceps versus implanters which is another debate and i think the primary purpose of implanters, it all boils down to graft yield, you know, graft safety, graft yeah. integrity, 
because common sense tells you that the more you manipulate this fragile uh, piece of tissue, the more likely they are to damage it. And there's all kinds of damage that can come to any individual graft. And I mean, it's probably the number one thing is just desiccation. If you're working in a dry environment, which here in the Midwest, we're prone to very dry air in the wintertime. These grafts sitting out for a very short period of time is like a grape turning into a raisin. They shrivel up on you fairly quickly. Um, the second is just the manipulation. How gentle is the graft being handled by the technician or the surgeon who's handling the graft? And ultimately, that comes down to experience. I think when you're looking at technicians in a generic sense, you have to say, well, how, what's the average technician's experience? How many years have they been in the business? You know, my head tech, technician, who is really the only one who works with me handling tissue as far as the placement is concerned, has been with me for 23 years. Wow. You know, that being said, you know, I'd personally close my eyes and take a nap if she was one putting graphs on top of my head because, I mean, I've literally seen her place millions of graphs, you know, after all these years. You place a lot of graphs. So, I think if you're looking at the average average technician with less experience, an implanter is something that's going to take the human element of touching and contacting this graft with forceps out of the equation. And you know, these forceps are gonna crush the crush the grafts when you're taking that graft and you're trying to put it into a tight opening, the, the follicle is gonna be flipping around and there's no question you're gonna get more more injury and, and potentially lower growth because of that mm. but when you're doing individual graft placements where i'm doing this with one person who i know and i see every graft that goes into a scalp i mean literally 100 percent of the grafts that go into the scalp i know what's happening at that moment in time i know if a graft is being bumped i know if a follicle is being bent mm. and i can make it a, an immediate call on the adjustments that need to be done you know, when you're dealing with a clinic where maybe the physician isn't in the room and entrusting the staff, what do you yeah. have to say to, to yourself? Yeah. As a patient, well, again, how much skill does this technician have and how much investment does this technician have in me as a patient? And, uh, you know, that's a whole nother debate. We can talk for an hour about that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I think implanters, there's, there's no question. There are some very highly respected physicians who have gone the implanter route. Personally, I think it's a great idea. All right. This second interview is from Dr. Mwamba of Atlanta and Brussels, Belgium. Uh, he gives his reasons as to why he prefers a certain technique. Dr. Mwamba has been doing FUE since its infancy in the early 2000s. He has decades of experience. He's an excellent surgeon. Definitely check out everything he has to say. And at the end, I'm going to share my thoughts. What are your views on pre-made slits versus DHI versus stick in place? Which one do you think is better? Uh, is there a better technique? Um, should people even be really you know, thinking about this when selecting a surgeon? What, what, are, your, what are your views on that? Okay. Thank you, Melvin, for inviting me first, and thank you for the community for following us. Uh, uh, in this subject of uh, pre-made incision versus DHI uh, versus second place, I will say first thing that is quite very important is the experience of who is doing the surgery. Because that is something that you have to keep in mind. Because every, su every surgeon as its own technique, and then over time, they master the technique. So it's like uh, everybody can make an omelet, but the ingredient you put in, you will master them, and then you will perform it correctly. So now we can go to the basic of pre-made, DHI, or stick and place. What is the best? Now let's go back to the biology. You know, when you make an incision. Because first thing we know that you have to, air transplant is what? Is to relocate some graft to put in another, in another area, the recipient area. So you take graft from the donor, you put in the recipient. And when you put in the recipient, you need to find a place for them to get in. So 
two things very important to keep in mind. So when you're making the incisions, like let's say you want to design your hairline, uh, you want to make a certain and you want to modify. So first thing important, when you, the advantage I would say from pre-made to DHI, because DHI, it's uh, for those who doesn't know, uh, DHI is just like when you make the incision, you have uh, like a pistol, eh? like a, it's kind of a pen, and directly you, you put the graft in. So it's like on one time, you made the incision, you put the graft in. That's the DHI method. So today, even though they have, we can talk a little bit after, it's the new kind of uh, DHI method, but not really DHI, because they use now a dye implanter. DHI mm -hmm. belongs to the implanter category. Mm -hmm. And then you have the stick and place when you make the incision, and right away you put the graft in. So what I want to uh, really emphasize here, when you make the incision, of course you have to follow a design. You have to calculate the number of, I would say, follicle per square centimeter. Mm. So when you make the pre-made incision, you can make all the incision, calculate, you know, because sometimes it's bloody, because when you make incision, it's bleeding. So if you have uh, blood in, the, in that way, you don't have a very clear view. So you have to every time wipe it off, wipe off the, 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 uh, the blood to really see the pattern you're making. So if you have to wipe off the graft, uh, the, the, the scalp, because you want to make incision, then if you have already grafting, it makes it a little bit difficult to wipe it off. So the pre-made incision allows you to design everything you want without worrying like I'm dislodging the graft. So you have like a, a virgin area, you make all the incision, you calculate the density, I want to add this. And then when you have everything, then you just come and put, put them in. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There are two world-renowned surgeons given their reasons why they prefer a method over another. I'm gonna close this by saying, it's not the technique, it's not the method, it's whoever is using them. So. If a doctor prefers to use the stick and place method and they get great results, then there's really no reason to question it. They're getting good results, they're comfortable using the stick and place method. If a doctor is using DHI and they're getting great results and they're experienced, there's really no reason to question it. Uh, however, I will say that DHI is not some fail-proof technique. It's not like, you know, you can get DHI and it's, oh, wow, it's it's magically going to give me more results than, you know, stick in place or pre-made slits. It's not. It depends on the clinic. Now, pre-made slits, the same thing. If a surgeon has been doing pre-made slits and they're getting great results, you know, there's really no reason to question it. It's not something that as a patient you should really look into. I just want to close this by saying what you should be looking at are the patient reviews. What kind of reviews is this clinic getting? Go to the Hair Restoration Network and research the surgeon before you choose them. Guys, the Hair Restoration Network has been around for over 20 years. There's thousands and thousands of hair transplant reviews from surgeons all over the world. And if you're not going on there and doing your due diligence, then you're really making doing yourself a disservice. All right, guys, that's going to be in the description box. Um, so if you guys found this video informative, I would really appreciate it if you guys would go ahead and give it a like. And if you like the content that I put on this channel, please consider subscribing and following me on my journey. Uh, I'm going to be getting my next hair transplant at the end of December, so stay tuned. All right, guys, till next time.